All right, hello, welcome everybody. All right, we, I know we're not planning to hear you. Welcome to the uh, first of hopefully many conversations we have with you moving forward on a really exciting program at UC Berkeley that we're launching a Master of Design. Uh, my name is Eric Paulus. I'm actually the director of the program and I'm joined here by a number of my colleagues uh, that have uh, played very significant roles in that and also also have been part of the genesis of this program. We're very excited to talk to you about it. Um, we're going to show you some slides. Um, and then I also want to invite you, if you have questions, many of you sent some in, and we're going to try to answer them at the end. But if you have questions um, in real time, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. You can go into the chat field, and we'll be monitoring that, and hopefully we'll be able to get back to you on that. Um, with that, uh, let me just do some brief introductions so you know uh, who we are and we'll talk about the program. Um, so I'm Eric Pauls, I'm faculty in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and I also, um, as you see here, the, the director of the Berkeley MDES program. And I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Kyle Steinfeld, I'm the Associate Professor in the College of Environmental Design, uh, and I serve as the Associate Director for the program. Hey everyone, my name is Bjorn Hartman. I'm an associate professor in EECS and I'm the faculty director for the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation, which will be the physical home of this new degree program. Um, we're also joined by um, a, a, a Emily Rice and Elizabeth Bauer, who are uh, basically significant people that play roles in both of the institutes that are primary drivers for this particular program. So you'll be learning a lot more about it, a lot more about the people you'll see. Um, we have an education committee that's made up of a number of different faculty members. Um, but let me tell you about the vision for this program. It's been in Genesis for several years, and we're very excited to tell you about it. Um, it's the first um, master of design program in the UC system. And if you think about it, this is the, we're talking about the University of California. This is the number one public institution in the world, the home of the genesis of design thinking and things like Wicked Problems out of the College of Environmental Design, the home to open source software from uh, engineering and computer science, the risk art computer architecture, home to social justice movements like the free speech movement. And we feel this is a magical place and the perfect place to bring design and design thinking with a Berkeley lens. The program in general is, uh, has a mission to create world-class design innovators who take an interdisciplinary approach to problem solving, uh, leveraging innovative technologies and drawing from a rich history of design. This program inspires the next generation of design uh, for designing tomorrow's thoughtful technologies today. Um, and that's really a part of where we want to see the program go, and we are hopeful that you will join us in that mission. So that, that tagline, uh, designing tomorrow, tomorrow's thoughtful technologies today, I, I, I just want to let, you, let everyone know that we really take that quite seriously. Um, we've, the, the program was born out of an idea that uh, the most pressing problems that we face in the world, uh, number one, are fundamentally uh, well addressed by, by design, by design problems, because design is kind of fundamentally a kind of interdisciplinary, uh, inter, interdisciplinary kind of project-based way of looking at the world. Um, uh, but it also presents a certain sort of problem, right? So, de so designing tomorrow's technologies, what are, design what are tomorrow's technologies? And how do we build up a discipline around technologies that have, have not yet been invented? Uh, we have um, schools and programs built around existing disciplines. We've got a school of landscape architecture. Uh, we've got a school of, uh, uh, there, there, uh, schools exist uh, to, um, to do product design and graphic design. But what about the technologies that, uh, that we're going to use tomorrow that, we, that, that don't yet exist? How do we kind of craft a new discipline around something that we don't quite know yet? Um, so that's kind of the fundamental question um, to me of the program. Um, and and I, I, maybe I'll, I'll go on to say the kind of people that we hope to, uh, that we hope to kind of train through this new discipline are, the, are, are tomorrow's practitioners, kind of future practitioners that look to work in creative and technical roles for designing products, services, and environments uh, that are enabled by emerging technologies. Uh, and to develop this practice across a, uh, an expanding set of roles at the intersection of design and policy and so social justice. Um, so where is the right place to do such a thing? Um, we feel that uh, the, the program is uniquely situated, uh, first of all, at, at UC Berkeley, which, is, which as um, Eric mentioned, uh, is the home to many of these ideas, uh, and also uniquely situated in the Bay Area, which um, is one of the most uh, energetic places in the world for these kinds of 
uh, issues, at least when we have power. It's quite energetic. Um, as you know, we're kind of going through a, a, a bit of an issue right now with, um, with, uh, with, our, with, with our power utility. Um, so this context it really presents a, um, uh, a, a, a unique opportunity, um, both uh, between the, our institution and, and the, uh, the, the region in which we sit. Uh, as well as a unique opportunity between our two institutions that are coming together. So that's the College of, Engin of Engineering um, via the Jacobs Lab and the, the, uh, the College of Environmental Design. Uh, so this program is uniquely situated between these two colleges uh, and is the first degree program here at UC Berkeley to, to, to span these two particular institutions. Um, so it's really quite an, an exciting uh, moment for us to kind of come together and, and collaborate. Pause for just a second. Pause for just a moment. I just admitted everyone. All right, we're back. We're all on board. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so some details about the program, about the nature of the program itself. Uh, this is what's understood as a self-supporting graduate professional degree program, which is just to say that we're professionally oriented. Um, the uh, it's a it's a studio-based model of education. Uh, so that's that's to say that uh, we'll be working in the same place. Uh, we'll have a kind of a, a studio environment uh, that we're all kind of working in, and studio will have, we'll offer studio courses in which all the problems and all the issues that we that we face together sort of synthesize. Uh, of course, we'll be on UC Berkeley campus. The program is a three-semester program. It starts in the fall, moves through the spring, and then we have um, uh, the following fall as well. Um, in summary, and we'll get into detail in this in a, in a moment, uh, there are nine required workforce. Uh, two of which are technical electives, uh, and one which could be uh, one elective which could be a um, an entrepreneurship or social practice elective. So, um, excuse me, those are nine required core courses, and then three of those are electives. Is that correct? Right. Um, of course, applications are open now, as you probably know, um, and uh, those who apply and are admitted will arrive in fall of 2020. Uh, we plan to admit 20 students at that time, and then grow to 45 students by 2022. Um, do I, should I hand off to you now? Or yeah, sure. Details? Great. Thanks, thanks Kyle. Um, let me uh, just tell you a little bit about how the program, little mechanics under the hood, because it's uh, often good to know what that might look like. Of course, there's themes. I mean, we're interested in uh, building technical rigor and design theory and methods and also things around sort of social justice and activism. The way the program will sort of function, this is the sort of typical layout, so I'll just give you a kind of highlight. It's three semesters. You arrive in the fall. And if you look, the coding here is the blue or the sort of required classes you'd be taking. And as Kyle mentioned, there's, uh, you'll be taking some technical or social practice and entrepreneurial electives along the way. So this is a sort of sample uh, format. One of the courses is a debate and design. Uh, this is a colloquium style course where there's a series of usually six or eight different speakers throughout the semester where you'll engage in different design topics around scales and issues of sustainability. Um, a very sort of energetic, vibrant class that um, is really supposed to build your skills at talking and discussing and really going deep about um, design rhetoric and, and design thinking. You also engage in um, design, technology design foundations, and this course will sort of be an entry point to a lot of different technical skills and communication and prototyping. Um, some of that will, you know, bridge materials from, you know, cardboard and paper and storyboarding, but also working with uh, digital fabrication, um, form giving, and some electronics for interactive um, devices. Of course, you'll be taking some electives during that time, and as the spring semester comes around, they'll be starting your first studio course. So there'll be a, a design frameworks course, first of all. This is sort of a history and theory of design. This gets into lots of social practices and ethics around design and design thinking. Um, there's a Newton lecture series, which gives you a chance to have firsthand interaction with a number of uh, different innovators, entrepreneurs, and Silicon Valley executives that give uh, various lectures as part of this series, and the Designing Emerging Technologies Studio course. At this time, there's a resident studio, as Kyle mentioned, so you'll be in the studio. This course is designed in brief to move you through a series of different technologies, but to think of them as the sort of uh, creative materials. So that could be, it'll be a sort of ever-changing uh, sort of pattern of those could be computer vision or augmented reality or assistive technology or robotics. Um, lots of different things could be in here um, and it will always sort of be updated and, and sort of timely to the different topics that are going on. Um, 
uh, then during the summer, basically, you'll have an opportunity to perhaps do an internship or other um, sort of um, ways to engage with design, specifically around the Bay Area, or um, you can go um, abroad. And then coming back, the, you'll return the next semester for your final semester. You'll be retaking the debates in design. It'll be a new set of lectures during that time, and also that we'll have um, you'll be joining the cohort that'll be coming in for the next year. So there's a nice sort of chance to kind of overlap there. The studio course will be the main design studio. We will be working on a portfolio capstone project. The design studio work is sort of team-based and the capstone is really you pulling out your individual contributions and building out your portfolio. So you can design uh, some flexibility in this, but that's a rough flow of how that would look. Um, and you get a chance to really interact with a lot of different faculty around campus. And so you, you, you met Kyle and myself and Professor Hartman, um, who are here today, but there's really a broad range of faculty across the College of Engineering and the College of Environmental Design. Um, I invite you to really go and explore um, their own individual research pages and, and projects. You'll see people from mechanical engineering, landscape design, um, uh, electrical engineering, a broad range that I won't use the time here to talk about, but give you a sense that you really have a lot of entry points uh, and touch points into design. We also have a real strength of our lecturers. These are seasoned individuals who have been teaching design and bring in their own personal practice. Uh, many of them have worked in industry and they bring in that perspective, which is really valuable to the program. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the actual application details. I know that's what many people called in about. Uh, this list basically are things that you're, you're familiar with. I'll highlight a couple issues here. One is that you'll want to have, uh, of course, you know, your transcripts and your CV. We're asking for a statement of purpose and a personal statement. There's information about what that is, but this gives us a little deeper um, way to understand your perspective and how you approach design and your work. Uh, we're also looking for some letters of recommendation. These should ideally point to your ability to excel in, in a graduate level program and, and maybe any design or technical expertise you have or evidence of any independent or creative work. That's what I would look for for, for that particular um, area. The other one I do want to mention is the portfolio. This will seem very common for many of you and perhaps something that's a little um, new for folks. I would embrace this as an exciting opportunity to really um, communicate your creative and technical proficiency through a kind of visual and textual means. And it's really exciting if you, if you have one, it's great to revisit it and, and sort of redesign that for this particular program. The thing I'll say is it should be legible to a general audience. So if you work in one specific field, you might want to think about how you would reframe the problem so that uh, people from other design disciplines could um, really appreciate and critique the work. You'll also want to, as many of you have had the chance to actually work in groups or teams, um, that's great. We definitely want to encourage you to tell us about that work. Just make sure that you highlight your specific contribution in there. And just really the role of this portfolio and is the reason it becomes, I think, uh, a lot of questions about it because there's not a rigid framework for what it actually is. But I would think about, we put some guidelines and information online. We'll try to put a little more there. But ultimately, we're looking for how you can communicate your skills, experience, perspective, and, and just what you really, how you work and how you deconstruct the world and, and really operate. And it's a really great thing. Coming to the program, you will definitely develop a strong portfolio. That's part of the, the sort of reason to do this. So um, a bit about the kind, the kind of profile of the ideal candidate for this kind of program. Um, uh, we are interested in people who are coming to, uh, who can bring to bear, I don't know, between one and three years of work experience. Uh, given that this is a, 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 an emerging program, it's kind of a synthetic thing that we're doing here, what, what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of work experience and what? Um, you know, these, these disciplines do not exist yet. Um, so uh, there's, a, there's a range of disciplines that would, really, that would really work and a range of kind of experiences that you could bring to bear, which would be very, very much relevant to the program. Um, ideally, that you would um, you would bring an interest or perhaps prior experience in uh, human-centered design of technologies and or environments, uh, as well as experience in technology, entrepreneurship, uh, social or environmental policy, uh, and or community engagement. Uh, and we'd hope to see these kinds of experience brought to bear both in the way that you craft your CV and the way that you um, put together your statement and, of course, uh, your portfolio. 
Um, we've been getting a lot of questions about how to prepare oneself uh, technically uh, for such a program. Um, we, uh, I will say that while we want applicants to have a, at least a kind of intermediate level of programming experience, we do, we will review your application uh, holistically. Um, that, what that means is, um, I don't know, let me put it this way. Uh, I have no, I'm an instructor in the program, I have no formal training in computer science. Um, so I, I've never taken even an introductory ACS course. <laughs> it might, might be surprising to hear. Um, but uh, the, the kinds of experiences that I sought out in practice sort of demonstrated uh, for me, like the, 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 a, uh, you know, I, I learned it on the job more or less, right? And through, through those experiences, I could kind of demonstrate a capacity for these kinds of things. And that's the sort of thing that we're looking at, right? So I'm, you know, I'm one of the people that'll be looking at your portfolios and your, and your applications. And so, so long as you can bring to, you can bring to bear a kind of a, a demonstrated interest and a willingness to learn these kinds of things, uh, then, um, then, then you'll get a, you, you get a, a favorable eye. Uh, in, in that regard. Um, Let me just add, you actually might be a programmer and not know it yet. So many of you might be thinking that you have to have years and years of computer science courses, but many of you might have worked with different software products and have to actually program or code in them. So. Yes, thank you. Uh, and, and for any architects that are on the call, you know, working with Grasshopper, that, that's a visual programming environment as far as we're concerned. Um, so what's next? Some more details. Um, we do offer financial aid. There's a limited number of competitive admissions uh, fellowships. Uh, these will be both need-based and um, merit-based. And of course, the decision there will be made based on the overall strength of, of the material submitted, uh, and there'll be no separate application required for that. Um, so there's nothing special you need to do there, uh, but we, we do offer financial aid of various types. Um, then to move on to our questions, um, we're going to pass these around a bit. Yeah. Okay? So this, what, we're, what you're seeing here is, and thank you so much for all the, all of you that sent in questions ahead of time. We tried to get sort of an overview of many of them, and hopefully this will address some of them, and we'll obviously take more as we go on. Um, Bjorn, do you want to take the first one? Then? Sure. So first question we got from you is, how is the program balanced in terms of focus across tangible materials, form giving? screen-based UIs, design systems, theory. I think the, the key word here that's already in a question is balance. Um, throughout this degree program, you will become a flexible designer who can work across all of these media because we want to prepare you to become a designer in emergent fields of technology that may not have job descriptions yet. And to become successful designers in these emerging fields, um, you have to have that balance that you, you will know how to uh, design an effective user interface, but you will also know how to make 3D models and fabricate them um, and work with electronics and, and other materials. So we want to give you a really, um, a really wide toolbox of different technologies that you can use as materials in your design. Now let me maybe tackle the next question um, as well which is, does the program incorporate any design management, business, or entrepreneurial classes? And the answer is yes. So you will take the Newton Lecture Series, which is offered by the Sertaja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology on campus. And um, you also have the option of taking either an entrepreneurship elective or a social practice elective. And so there will be um, a sequence of courses that allow you to pick there. So Great. I'll take these next two. Uh, is there a thesis or capstone project? Yes, there is. <laughs> uh, as as uh, as we just showed a few slides back, there's a cap what we call a capstone studio, uh, and the way that that works is that it'll it'll be a, a you know a studio course. Uh, so we'll be working in that studio space. We'll be working through a project, and we'll be working uh, as a group um, on a kind of capstone project. Uh, well, excuse me, on on a studio project. Um, and then uh, there's a separate course, which for administrative reasons had to be expressed as a different course. But then there's, um, there's an individual component of that capstone project in which you'll kind of define a smaller area to kind of work within, maybe technical, maybe kind of socially driven, uh, to, um, to kind of to, to build on that, on, to, to, to build towards that collective project. Um, so the short answer is yes. Uh, another short answer is the curriculum mostly studio or academic slash writing based. This is a studio program. The studio is very much studio focused. Um, not to say that you won't write, 
uh, but you'll spend most of your time in the studio working through projects. Great, thanks, Carl. Um, so the last one, we've hit a couple of these issues along the way already. It's this, this uh, in this design program, and particularly some of these studio courses, what are the actual technologies? And I think Bjorn did a nice job highlighting the kind of flavor and culture of fabrication and making. Um, and as I mentioned, the designing emerging technologies will walk you through many different kinds of technologies as materials. And I mentioned, you know, it could be computer vision, it could be speech recognition or conversational interfaces, it could be augmented reality or virtual reality or robotics or wearable or bio-inspired design or smart tools or mobility. This is a, a sort of hint of some of the flavor of the topics that might that people might grapple with in there. Um, obviously, it'll be rotating and it won't always be the same, but I think for anyone in design and emerging technologies, you'll find it really engaging and um, also, if you something doesn't exactly tickle your fancy, we move on quickly. That's by design to keep you thinking. The, the actual studio course, um, there will be sort of some themes that, you, that are worked on, and that, those are sort of still to be decided. But you can imagine something we're looking at, maybe uh, IoT technologies for accessibility and uh, democracy in public places. We might target, we might partner with the city of San Francisco. We might look at you know, the future of transit or equal access with a partnership with, you know, BART or the Ford Motor Company. We might design technology solutions to counter different kinds of uh, violent extremism or issues that um, come up very topically today. We would have to part, we would partner with the Department of State, for example, on that. And we've done courses like this in the past. So these are not things that I'm magically dreaming up. These are things where we have actual expertise. Um, let me move on to the next page. So one of the questions that's obviously asked is, great, where do all the alumni from this program go? And as many of you probably figured out, we're just starting this, so we don't have specific alumni. You are the future alumni. Yes, you are. Uh, but let me let me give you a little bit of thinking about what we're really um, imagining for this, because um, it is a new program, um, but this is a place, because of the skills you'll be learning, we think that uh, particular uh, particular opportunities, you could be a design technologist at a design consultant company like Lunar or Frog Design or IDEO. You could be a, sort of a hybrid designer or developer and a research and development team perhaps at, at Microsoft or Google. You might be a, a principal technical designer at Microsoft HoloLens, maybe a, design, a product design engineer at Apple doing some UX design for a company. You could have a startup. We have, a, we have connections to many uh, different companies, Google, Adobe, Autodesk, Microsoft, Accenture Labs, Intel, the, the list sort of goes on. Um, I will say that there will be some, uh, there will be a position for someone as staff to actually help with coordinating and helping with these relationships as we move forward. And that's very much on our radar to have that person on board soon to help you in that trajectory. But to keep in mind, uh, the, some of the jobs that I listed again are also not magical. These are actual real job postings that we have found that exactly mimic the style of the work that we're doing in this program. So you will gain the skills to go into that particular program. Um, sure. I can, I'll, sure. I'll take the next one. Sure. Um, are we allowed to take other classes at UC Berkeley outside of the program? So as you saw in the overview slide for the three semesters, a lot of the classes that you will take, you'll take as a cohort of students and move through these classes together. But we have built in flexibility um, in the technical, social practice, and entrepreneurship electives. And we already have a list of courses um, that you can take for these electives, but that is also um, a list that we'll continually look at um, revising and expanding with input from you about what kind of courses um, you see are really um, valuable for you. Uh, I'll take the next one as well because it's, it's a straightforward forward one. Um, what about your undergraduate GPA? Is that an issue for admittance? And there, um, we actually don't set the policy, there's kind of a standard policy that applies for all graduate programs at UC Berkeley by the graduate division, um, which says that to um, get into a graduate program, you have to have a bachelor's degree or a recognized equivalent, um, and you have to have a satisfactory scholastic average, which usually means about a 3.0 GPA on a 4.0 uh, scale, 
But if you're coming from a different country where these things are measured in, in different ways, then um, the graduate division has a lot of experience in knowing how to interpret records from, from different schools. So I'll take this next one. Is it possible to start in the program in the spring and end in the fall? No, it is not possible to do that. Uh, so a huge part of studio-based learning is the cohort and the kind of peers that, that are around you. And go, moving through such a program with that cohort and learning together and working together is a, is a critical and critically important part of the culture of such a thing. Um, so in order to do that, we have to be admitted one time and then everyone kind of moves to the program together. Um, and I can also take this next one. What should the recommenders, the re recommenders include in their letters that would be most helpful to the admissions committee? First, I would say, um, from my point of view, you should find a you should find a recommend, recommendation uh, someone to write you a recommendation who, who knows you well. Um, if you have a choice between someone um, who uh, who's very famous and has an impressive name, or someone who can speak to your merits very effectively, I would definitely choose the latter. Uh, but then specifically, um, you're, you should you should find recommenders who can do three things for you: uh, speak to your ability to excel in a graduate level coursework and the unique demands of graduate level coursework. Uh, number two. Uh, speak to your prior design and or technical experience uh, and how you how you flourished in those environments. Uh, and number three, uh, speak to or kind of bring to bear evidence of your independent uh, and or creative work. So those are the three things I would look for. Ooh, we're going to end in 10 minutes. All right. So we're going to. Um, all right. So we're going to open it up to questions. I apologize if it went a little long, but hopefully we address some of the things that were of concern. Uh, I'll leave this up because you can obviously apply, go to the website, um, and then if you, we're actually going to have an in-person event here in San Francisco, which you'll see. But um, we're excited to hear from you. Great. Um, I'm Emily. Um, I'm here monitoring the chat window, so thanks to all of you who have submit questions. Um, I'll be sorting through them and um, trying to kind of pair ones that match up. So um, I have kind of two questions that represent different sides of maybe the spectrum of applicants for you. So. First question is, I know that you will be looking at applicants holistically, but what are your consideration factors for people with a more technical background and slightly less artistic experience in their portfolio? And then I think kind of the flip side of that question is, what are some of the strongest skills that a prospective student with less of a technical background but a passion for design innovation can bring to their application and to the program at large? Um, those are really great questions, um, so I'll let the faculty share their thoughts. Well, first, I'd say I love that we have a call where those two questions are asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, that, I think that we're doing the right thing. Um, so the, the, the big idea of such a course is that we need to get the person who asked the first question together with the person who asked the second question. And you two have a lot to teach each other. Um, and so I think that the, the thing to do in your application is to, to show your strength in the, uh, in, in the areas that you're strong in uh, and do so. I mean, I can, I can speak more to the creative side than the technical side personally. Uh, but to do so in a way that, that is um, both a demonstrative of the depth involved and also clearly explaining to someone who is not in your area why it's valuable and why it's important. Um, there's no need to invent strengths that you don't have. Uh, however, if you see that there's um, kind of an area that you could, you could um, kind of brush up on in, 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 uh, in advance of the course, then you could also kind of mention and discuss uh, what, uh, what kind of steps you could take or um, are currently taking in order to kind of bridge that gap, the kind of cultural, the kind of, the, the kind of cultural difference that we each bring to bear. Does that sound right? Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. Um, I, we should, I want to move on to make sure we get to enough questions. I think it's just in general, play to your strengths. Um, and also, if you are coming from a technical field and you think all I have is all these technical things, I would just take a step back and think how have you been creative in working with those technical materials, those technical things. And if you can put some lens onto that, that I think would strengthen that proposal. Great, thank you. Um, another question that kind of follows up on this conversation, um, I think related about kind of what skills are uh, needed in applicants, but this student wants to know, or prospective student wants to know, are there more details you can provide about the technical skills we should obtain prior to application? Um, so I know you touched on this a little bit, but um, just for a student who's kind of wanting maybe a little more, what else can we share with them? Yeah, so one, uh, one item that I just want to restate is that we do expect that you come in with a certain level of proficiency in programming. 
Um, so this is a fast-paced pro um, three-semester degree program, and there's not enough time to basically start from zero. But um, if you don't have that background yet, um, on the website, we've already shared some ideas of how you could prepare to, um, to gain that, uh, that technical preparation between now and the time the program would start. Great. Um, and then again, a question kind of focused on who this is best suited to and types of preparation. So we've shared um, on the website that this program is particularly relevant for folks with some um, professional experience and we highlight kind of the one to three years. Um, but would this also be a meaningful program for someone with 10 to 12 years experience? Um, and uh, would, would they be a good applicant and would this program benefit them? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that was sort of a little bit of an arbitrary numbering. I mean, it should, you should take it as, um, for many people, they've gone and developed some skills from perhaps their bachelor degree, they've gone out, they've had impact in their careers or whatever industry they've uh, been part of, and most likely you probably had a personal epiphany, something that you want to come back and retool. Some people that happens 12 months out, sometimes it's 12 years out, but it's a moment where you think, I could pivot my career, I could have greater impact, I could have some skills to do things that I'm not capable of now. Um, that's the kind of passion we're looking for, and that can happen at any stage in, in your life. And so you shouldn't view that as some a hard, fast number there. Great. And a couple of folks have asked about specific programming languages that we um, use or acquire. Um, I think our, our um, interest is more in uh, making sure that people will be able to pick up new languages quickly um, when confronted with new technologies in the program. Do you guys have anything else to add to that question? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate, Emily. I mean, we're not looking for you to hear the three languages you should know. I think it's to the point that we should be able to uh, give you perhaps a new language or an API or some development environment, something that you might quite honestly might not be familiar with, but you feel comfortable finding materials online. There's instruction about how to put together and collage together software to make it functional. So it might not be a specific uh, language. Great, thank you. Um, one easy question to answer. Um, yes, we will provide access to this deck after the session. It might take us maybe a week or two to get it up, but we will share it on the website. So thank you for the person who asked that question. Um, another question that came in is, how will we help students find internships in the summer, and do we have a career center or employment resources? Um, so I can speak a little bit to that. Um, we're currently working to build out this staffing for the uh, MDES, and we're going to have three really amazing staff who you guys um, in the program will all get to know super well. One of them will um, be focused on career services, so they'll be building connections with companies, putting on some events, whether that's a career panel or like a portfolio review day. Um, so again, because this is a brand new program, we don't have all of that built out just yet, but we'll be putting it together over the coming year, and we're really excited to offer those resources for you. Um, let's see, I think we're getting close to the end, so if you have any burning questions, um, definitely shoot them through the chat uh, window now. Um, if you don't get to ask your question today or have it answered, you can always reach out to us via email or schedule a call with an advisor. Um, but one last question maybe for now would be um, about a student wants to know more about the facilities and fabrication resources that students would have access to. Sure. So I can speak to that. Um, the program will be at home in Jacobs Hall, which um, is one of the newest buildings on UC Berkeley's campus. And we have the, uh, the biggest makerspace on campus. Um, and the facilities there range from uh, multi-material 3D printing, to water jet cutting, to electronics labs, to circuit board milling. So we have a really wide um, variety of both accessible and very high-end prototyping and fabrication tools that you will have access to throughout your program. If you want to learn more about those resources, you can go to jacobsinstitute.berkeley.edu, and there's a page that lists all of the equipment that exists and come to the design showcase at Jacobs in December. All right, thank you all for being part of the program. Please check the website. We'll put many of these up there. Join us on November 12th if you can in person, and we'll be in touch. We look forward to seeing your applications. All thank right. you all. Bye.